I'm here at the French and Jumps headquarters in Stansted Abbots, Hertfordshire, in the boardroom to meet with their expert molsters to discuss the conversion process of barley into malt before reaching your glass. I'm Doug Horton, uh, I work here at French and Jupps Maltings, uh, I'm the business development manager. The barley we use is all locally sourced, there's no point in bringing barley from miles away, uh, it's not economically sound and it's also not good for the environment. Uh, here in the southeast of, of Britain is where most of the grain in the country is grown, so that's where uh, the best malting barley is grown, that's why we're here as a maltings. The varieties we use are recommended varieties uh, by NIAB, National Institute of Agricultural Botany, and they recommend the varieties uh, through plant breeders and so on. And we only use specific varieties of barley uh, to make our malt, the recommended varieties, and because we roast them and it's a harsh process, we only use winter sown barleys. And over the years they changed, there's been literally hundreds in the years I've been here. Well, I didn't know there yeah. were so many varieties. I think we've seen a few here today. At what at Stone, what was being grown was, was, was carrot barley, I think it was a winter? Yeah, win it is a winter variety. We can't use spring varieties at all. Um, it, the process is quite harsh and it, uh, we need it to retain the skin. Uh, so when we liquefy it in the roasting process it doesn't all burst out and make a big mess in the roasting drum. So that's why we use winter varieties, the skin is better retained uh, as opposed to spring varieties. What is the malt primarily used for? Is, is, it, is it simply beer or is there quite a cross range of markets? Malt goes into a lot of products and it will surprise you how many products it goes into. Anything with the prefix malt malt whiskey, malt vinegar, malt bread, malt teasers, uh, malt will go into, but there's a lot of other products that use the word malt, malted milk biscuits, malted shreddies, but then there's a lot more where you don't realise malt goes into, uh, like Bisto gravy granules, Coleman's uh, packet mixes, that sort of thing. Um, and it's all different types of malt. You can have whole grain malt that the brewers use, they just slightly crack it and, and use it that way. You can make it into a flour and then replace wheat uh, with malt flour, i.e. make malt bread. Or some of our customers, they turn it into a malt syrup and that syrup is used to replace sugar syrups in foods. Uh, it's much more natural and less harmful to you. So it's a, a much better product in that, and it adds colour as well. Coca-Cola, drinks like that can use it. Now I know that French and Jupp's history dates back some 300 years, so I was wondering, is there anything which stands out about the process in the way you malt barley, perhaps some traditional methods that you might use? The only traditional method we now still use is the patent method of roasting malt. Uh, Times have changed. The, the drums were small and hand turned uh, in the 1700s uh, and they were heated up using coal or wood. Well, nowadays the drums are driven by large electric motors and the heat source is uh, natural gas. Um, so it's changed over the years, uh, but it's still the basic same process, the same way you make the mould. Brilliant. Of these three, it's the brown malt that is one of the patent malts. That yeah, the got. brown, the brown and the black are both patent malts. The uh, crystal is uh, made completely differently to the, the the patent malts. It's a lot sweeter. Crystal malts and carrots are a lot sweeter. Here in front of us, we've got three uh, malts, all different colour, which will produce different flavour and different sweetness levels. We have a brown malt which is lowest in colour, uh, the middle one is a crystal malt but it's actually a slightly darker crystal, 200 colour, and on the end is a black malt uh, which is very dark, the darkest malt we make. I've been um, brewing my entire career, over 30 years, um, and luckily I've been able to brew some great beers all over the world, but uh, now I'm now here with French and & Jupps and uh, enjoying my role as Managing Director of French & Jupps. I think what we'd like to do is introduce you to three unique malt types. Uh, we produce a wide range of malts, uh, over 14 malt types, uh, but these three are quite unique and quite special because 
uh, brewers would typically use these malts uh, to produce porter style beers. So that's what we've got today, a nice set of um, malt types that, that brewers use for porter beers. Uh, and we're going to start off with the uh, extra dark crystal malt. Uh, and this, this is a very rich crystal malt, so very sweet, intensely sweet, lots of treacle notes coming through. And then just below the, the sweet sugary treacle notes, what you see is, is real um, depth of dried fruit coming in um, and then with a nice subtle nuttiness at the end. So a very unique malt type um, and I think uh, goes very well with a, with a porter style of beer. So I mean uh, we routinely taste the, the malts, we evaluate the malts uh, to ensure we're hitting the right profile and so we look at the aroma first very much in the same way that you would taste a beer. So you look at the aroma and then from there you will then taste the malt tea uh, that we evaluate and again you can see the, the lovely depth of colour that we have here from the dark crystal uh, malt. Now is that a, a malt tea, is, is that the actual terminology that you'd give to uh, actually the tasting process? Yeah essentially that's what we've made here, so we've made a, a rich malt tea um, yeah, from grinding up um, the malt sample and then uh, steeping it and then filtering it uh, to produce this rich tea that we're looking at here. So we've moved along now from the extra dark crystal malt to a brown malt. Brown malt is, uh, is quite a special malt, quite rare. You don't find many malts today producing a brown malt. And um, typically for porter beers, brown malt was the ingredient. It was the key malt that was used to make a porter beer. Today it's changed slightly. Brewers will use a, a pale malt and bring in um, chocolate malts, extra dark crystal malts and black malts. But historically, going back to the 1700s, it was brown malt that was used exclusively in porter beers. I think what we're looking for here with, with brown malt is uh, much stronger, rich, fresh roasted coffee notes coming out, um, which are very prominent on the aroma and also as you taste. Uh, the malt itself and that's what the brewer will be looking for, some nice depth of coffee character coming out. Also some delicate chocolate notes, some rich fruit, nice sweetness as well. Um, and also what, what's very pleasant is nice fresh breakfast toast as well. So a lovely balanced malt, uh, lots of character and uh, ideal for you know a rich porter style of beer. Yeah, this is this is our black malt, and uh, you know, hugely popular malts both here in the UK, but also overseas markets too. Very popular with craft brewers. A hugely, hugely complex malt, and it's got such enormous depth of uh, smokiness, um, kind of very pronounced barbecue coals, very kind of uh, deep and dark in colour, as you can see here. Um, looks quite luxurious. And then uh, what you are seeing behind kind of a, that immense smokiness up front is, um, is a very pleasant bitterness, which I think brewers find combine well with the hops to give a very, very well balanced beer. But a, a, a lovely, lovely malt, uh, smokiness, breakfast toast, grainy, but huge, huge character. Um, and, and similar to perhaps the brown malt as well, lovely coffee notes coming through. It's like the uh, almost the very best uh, espresso you've ever tasted right here in a glass. Okay, so we're looking at uh, a very fine porter beer brewed by a local brewer, Little Haddon Brewery, just down the road from us here. Um, and they just do such an outstanding job making you know, a very special porter beer. Porter beers are unique. Um, we've been brewing, I guess, in, in the UK porter beers since the 1700s. So a very historic ale uh, that I guess dipped in popularity in the 1800s but has seen a huge resurgence uh, in recent years, not just here in the UK, but also globally. But typically, as we said, you know, in, a, um, in a porter beer, brewers would have been working exclusively with, uh, with brown malt, typically. But more recently, in recent times, the brewers have become perhaps more creative and they're now bringing in um, you know, deeper, darker malts, uh, you know, your black malt that we've looked at earlier, uh, combining it with maybe an extra dark crystal and maybe an element of brown malt in there as well 
to really get the character of the beer thereafter. Something really unique. Absolutely, very unique. Um, but coming through, what you can see is, you know, you can see that lovely, uh, pleasant smokiness, that rich coffee character coming through that we saw in the malts earlier. Um, and also some lovely, pleasant, pleasant dried fruits coming through, um, dates, prunes, it, you know, so well balanced, um, something to savour. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, comparing, at least just on the fragrance of this beer alone, to some of the malts we've just looked at, you can really, you can really detect that, that those notes of the, of the dried fruits, let's say. Uh, absolutely, and, uh, and, you, and you talked earlier, James, when you were seeing him in the crystal malt, you saw some very rich caramelised sugars coming through, maybe delicate toffee notes, uh, and it's all here, it's, it's all packed into this wonderful beer. It's wonderful. I think there's only one thing left to do then. Mm. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Cheers. 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 Cheers.